my parents all also within that told us that we had to be 10 times better hmm. to get an invitation to the table. Wow. Not a seat, mm-hmm. an invitation. invitation. Just to and so enter the room. I took that. Literally. Literally. Mm-hmm. And really worked hard to be excellent at whatever I put my mind to. Because my parents also were like, there's no safety net. Hmm. So don't come back here if you don't, if you make, don't it. make it. Wow. So then, like, when you hear that, you're like, I actually don't have another option. But to succeed. But to make it. What? At what age did that become real for you? Was that are we talking like after high school? We talk about college. Like what? When did you like fully understand like there's no elementary school? Oh wow, that's really early. Yeah, I'm also the oldest, so it was. All, and my dad started a church. My dad was the pastor of the church, and we were the example. I mean, a couple of things like, um, I think these are fun facts. Uh, we went into stores single file in birth order, only spoke when we were spoken to. Really? I have answered the phone all the way from like seven or eight, six, seven, yeah, like seven or eight mm-hmm. um, till 19. Hello, this is the Harris residence. Maurice speaking. How can I help you? Like it's a script. Oh, everybody had to answer the phone that way. Who started that? My dad. Hmm. Because we, like, this is before answering machine. <laughs> and it drove him crazy that we would, like, answer the phone and, like, accidentally hang up or, like, not get all the information or whatever. And so then we were banned from answering the phone. But then it got annoying to always have to it's, stop whatever you're you doing to answer the phone. It's like, go answer that phone, boy. <laughs> but, like, then we had a protocol. Mm. Um, anytime we had a program at church, my dad's like, you always volunteer and you better have the best speech and you better do it well. And you always need to represent us. What well. like, it was just like this thing, always this thing. And so I've always been like, like I have no problem going in front of a million people and doing whatever. I wow. do not care. Because at, at that point it already been just baked into your DNA. Yeah. Like it's it's a just part hardwired of, yeah. as, as your new habits. I am a performer. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Tell me. So then as you start thinking about, careers and things were you thinking you were going to go into the church or you Ew, know no what were you what did you want to be never ever ever as soon as i could get out of there i knew i was going to be out like a light <laughs> um but it was such a huge part of my upbringing i don't know what i thought i was going to do necessarily i mean i i think another very shaping part of who i am um, was I was the drum major of my marching band. Oh, wow. Which is the person who spins the stick in front of the marching mm-hmm. band who keeps Leads time. Away. Yeah, I do not know how to play the drums. <laughs> um, and we were, I'm in California and um, Northern California, so it's not like how they do it in the South with all the oh, flair. Okay. It's very formal. So basically, mm. I am spinning a stick mm-hmm. like crazy and it has to look like it's flying all around my body, but I'm not moving. Hmm. Um, you can't look at it like it. It's just like so technical and so crazy. Yeah. And um, I practice like four hours a day. Wow. And I had this idea because I wanted to be in drill team. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be in color guard. Mm-hmm. I wanted to do the girl stuff. I wanted to dance around and not play an instrument. Yeah. I wanted to do something I to else. Do the things, yeah. And so then I was like, "Ooh, the most masculine version of this is the drum major." <laughs> and I'll be the leader, and I'll be able to, like, be an individual, yeah. and I'll be able to, like, I, I think, and my dad was really into band. Mm. And so in seventh grade, I was like, at one point, some point, I'm going to become the drum major. So I was going to ad- audition in middle school. It didn't work out. Um, my freshman year in high school, I ended up not doing band. And then when I transferred to the next school from 10th to 12th grade, I saw that the drum major was a sophomore. Hmm. And I was like, or excuse me, a senior. When I was a sophomore, he was a senior. senior. And I was like, oh, I'm going to be drum major next year. Period. Period. So I would go to band band practice happened on Monday nights. I think seven to nine or something like that. And so I would get there at six and ask the drum major if he would teach me a few of his tricks or just how to work the mace. I begged my parents to get me a mace. <laughs> Maybe I paid, saved up and paid for it myself. I can't remember. And... um. 
I practice like a crazy person. And I was undeniably, undeniably the best. The best. And what really f***ed us all up for everybody was there are juniors that are about to be seniors mm -hmm. who are essentially have been there since freshmen and were guaranteed the position. And right. then here I come with my b***h ass. <laughs> and so then I really threw everything off. So then mm -hmm. I became the marching drum major, mm -hmm. the a marching drum major, and then they let them be the field drum major. Yeah. Which then meant that nobody at school knew what I did. Mm. But everybody, but I was the one winning all the awards. Hmm. And then what gets even more complicated, the reason why I tell the story, it'll just kind of dovetail into all of this stuff, which is, um, or how competitive and how deep all this stuff goes. Um, while I was in my senior year in high school, I was number one in Northern California. I was almost undefeated, but I was cocky my first time, and I got third place instead of first. Mm. But out of all the different categories, there's three categories. There's the open, which is where you just use your hands. There's okay. military, which is the little short stick. And then there's mace, which is the long one. I was mace. And so there's a first, second, and third for each of those categories. Right. I always had the top score of all of them. Oh, my goodness. So I was hard core. Yeah. Which Extremely. is like the foundation of who, who you are. I am in many right, ways, right. right? Based on how you were raised. And I had plotted this whole scheme since like seventh grade to make my dad super proud. And then that's when my dad left my mom mm. and moved away. So mm. he wasn't even around to see to this see whole this plan happening. that I had manifested. Wow. And it was just kind of, you know, fascinating, right? Yeah. To, and devastating. Of course. Uh, because I'm finally excelling at something and doing something that I love, that I really was drawn to, and um, the people I really wanted to impress were not there the to One person it. you wanted to, to show was unavailable. Yeah. So, you know, those things have um, kind of makes me sad just talking about, I, I don't talk about it that much, but it's just like, damn, that's like, it's hella sad. Especially at that age. Yeah, where you're just like, I've literally worked my whole life to impress my parents. And when we talk about, like, a narcissistic, narcissistic personality, my dad doesn't even notice things unless they're extraordinary. Hmm. Hmm. Right? Oh, my goodness. So unless yeah. you do something so over the top... It doesn't get his attention. It doesn't really matter. Wow. And I finally thought I had done that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it didn't even matter then. So it was just like, so my work ethic and how I do things, you know, when I first started my business and how I work, mm -hmm. um, I was on a vendetta again okay. to prove to my dad, to prove to my mom, to prove to my family that I am a value when I came out as gay. Like, all of a sudden, this, like, I was like the token, the model you know, grandson, nephew, mm -hmm. son. Um, and then I was just, like, tarnished goods. Like, wow. I just, like, from one day to the next, it was almost it like just... I wasn't as talented. I wasn't, something was wrong with me. I'm sick. I'm, mm -hmm. like, some, like, I have a problem. Like, yeah. all of that. So um, I've just been on a mission to prove Proof. things. Mm. What's fascinating, nine years of therapy, Turning 40 a couple weeks ago, I don't give a shit <laughs> anymore. But that's also because things in my life are starting to work. Things are starting to shape around your vision, right? And you don't, yes. you don't have to feel like you have this thing on your back that's saying, oh, well, because you didn't do it that way, that's why maybe you're not thriving the way that you want to. But maybe Precisely. it was just time. Yeah. Just timing. Tell me, so, you know, you're at a different place in life mm -hmm. now. And, but you, 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 a, a part of your life was this corporate life, mm -hmm. right? And, and essentially you, you wanted to be a designer. I did. I wanted to be a fashion designer. Fashion designer, right? Mm -hmm. And you, I know you'd started doing window displays. You started doing a couple of different things down this lane. What, you know, what happened in that transition? Why, why didn't you continue that path? Um, 
That's a really good question. You know, everybody says that's a really good question when they're trying, they're to, trying buy to buy time it. <laughs> to figure out what the hell they're going to say. <laughs> it's good media training. <laughs> yeah, totally. That's a really good question. Um, no, I... I'm liking that question because I've, I, I, I haven't precisely thought about it in those terms before. Mm-hmm. Um, why did I leave and not go back? Um, I've had every kind of job in terms of I've been freelance, I've worked corporate, mm-hmm. I've worked retail, I've worked service, you know, retail or service. Yeah. Um, and they all have their problems. Mm. Um, none of them are perfect. Mm-hmm. And I think what happened for me, my dream job was to work at Barney's mm. in the window display department. And that was essentially my first job out of college. Okay. Um, when I transferred from fashion design to fine art. And then I didn't even know how I would get into fashion because I didn't have the connections anymore. Mm-hmm. I didn't know how to make a portfolio precisely. Mm. And would anybody believe that I even know what I'm doing? Blah, 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 blah. Like all those kind of things. Yeah. And so I was like really stressed out about it, mm-hmm. quite frankly. And, um, but I was like, well, let's see what happens at Barney's. Like I was just a salesperson, but then I quickly got into the window display department. Mm. And... I, it was my most favorite job I've ever had. Your most favorite? I loved it. I went to bed at night, <laughs> and I could not wait to get to work in the morning. What, what was it about? Like Because I just got to play. Uh. I got to just, like, come up with an idea, like, oh, I want... I want these really fancy mannequins in, like, five and $10,000 dresses to be doing laundry. <laughs> I found a, like... <laughs> laundry cart on the side of the street. I'm going to bring it in the store and we're going to have them like, I'm going to get some plastic hangers and like put all these fancy clothes on this thing. Isn't that funny? <laughs> and they're like, I love that idea. Do it. Do it. Um, oh, I want to like take these old frames and make like these like denim portraits and like make these denim sculptures inside of the frame and like blah, 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 blah. And they're like, do it. And I'm like, okay, cool. I want to do something with flowers. I want to make these, like, weird flower headband crown yeah. things. I think they'll be really pretty. And, like, put them with, like, you know, these contemporary collections and blah, 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 blah. Do it. I want to paint this portrait. I want to, like, I mean, I just got to literally... Literally create a freedom. If I thought about it, I generally speaking, and could justify it, and it didn't cost me a ton of money, I could just do whatever I wanted. Wow. And then I was so committed. We got so committed at, like, becoming a part of the directive mm-hmm. that would, like, we were doing really cool stuff so that then, like, that would be something that they would implement in other stores. Yep. And so then um, my first boss that I had was the pits, if I'm honest. Mm-hmm. And then my second boss that I had, like, really just encouraged, and embraced, and nurtured my creativity mm-hmm. and, like, would be like, we're going to, let's get half of our Let's get at least half of our ideas in the directive. Let's hmm. see if we can, like, get corporate to really love really, what we're doing. Yeah. And we started to find that. Huh. Like, and it was just so fun. Yeah. I did not get paid enough money to make a living. <laughs> I can pay my student loans and wow. pay my rent yeah. and pay for food and, like, hmm. saving up for the designer clothes with my discount that I'm, like, trying to live this life, live so above my all means. All the little money that you're making is going right back into it, right? You know? And that's, you know, that's the frustrating thing about when you find something you love. When yeah. you, the salary or whatever the compensation is doesn't match. And so for me, that's when I got a very, very clear understanding that following your passion mm. and it won't feel like work and all these other things is a little bit of a myth. Mm. Um, that having your dream job is not, does not fulfill your life, right? Uh, when I went corporate, and I went and when I worked at Juicy, I um, got paid really well. Mm-hmm. My boss was awful. He was <laughs> so mean to me. Mm-hmm. He made my life a living hell, and no one had my back. Mm-hmm. I was again in a position where right. I was just like fending for myself. Right. And was it like that for everyone? Were people just out for themselves in that environment? No. Oh. No. My department had a good old boys club, mm. and like them and their freelancers and their people, like, were treated so well. Hmm. And I was never taken seriously, even though, like, I 
probably did the most work mm. and like really created like systems, like literally created systems that like when I started there, we had three stores. When I left, there was like 113. Oh my goodness. In four and a half years. And I was a part of the, you know, the window team. Yeah. Like I, I produced the, I created my own job. <laughs> so I ended up producing all the windows for um, the props and all the different yeah, things yeah. that were needed in the windows for the whole company. Mm. And it while it was really interesting because I got to hire all my friends and people, yeah. different artisans, and get to know people that I wanted to know and, mm -hmm. like, figure out how to work with animatronics because I always <laughs> wanted to do something with animatronics. So yeah. I got, like, I we came up with an idea that, like, made it where I could go and figure out how to do that and mm -hmm. meet people that do that kind of work. And wow. so, like, I, I, that's how I got exposed to flowers. I was always mm. sourcing things at the flower market. Mm -hmm. So I would, like, then, like, peek over at the, in the market and see what was going on over there. Yeah. So, so there was, like, there was definitely, it was valuable, mm -hmm. but it was also so, so limiting mm. and so oppressive. The and opposite of what? The other gig was, yeah. that, but didn't pay well. Yes. And I was just like, gosh, <laughs> both of these are trash. This is <laughs> big trash. And I just, like, and and once you've had your dream job twice yes. in a row, yeah, it's pretty devastating to be like, I literally, when I finally got laid off and got my severance, I was just like, this is so strange to be like, I don't know, I think I was 30 years old or mm -hmm. 29 or something like that. 29, 30, 31, somewhere in that range. Yeah. And I was like, to just not really have a drive to do, to do that. anything. Mm. Because I was like, I don't know how I could start a flower business. Mm. I liked doing it, and mm -hmm. I was doing it as a hobby, and it was fun. But I was like, how do I really turn this into a business? And was that like kind of the the idea at the time, kind of your creative idea at the time when you're in this transitional period? You're like, I really like this flower thing. You were actually thinking like, maybe I'll try to do more with it. Yeah, because I liked it. Yeah. So I was like, maybe I could do this. But I all. But the thing that how I got into it kind of deep was mm -hmm. I always I really believe that I believe this so strongly for any creative that's out there. Um, this is the gym. Don't edit this part out, <laughs> which is you always have to have something for yourself. Hmm. Always. What do you mean by that? As a creative that has a creative job mm -hmm. where you get paid to be creative. Mm hmm. Your creativity is constantly compromised because someone is paying hmm. for you to interpret whatever. So okay. it is not a pure expression. Okay. So have something that you do creatively that belongs to you. Mm. Where you pay for it or you can put it out. You can do all kinds of things or with you, it. Or not or just But for it's yourself. all for you. Yeah. So that then you are not resentful Mm. when somebody wants to do 20 edits or 20 changes. It's like, <laughs> I don't give a shit. Like, this is yours. You paid for it. Yeah. Like, and I want to be creative and do a good job, but, like, I was finding that I get resentful. Yeah. I was getting also resentful at my job because I was defined by that job. By just that. You didn't have an outlet at the time. No. Okay. I, like, I, I was so good at it. Mm -hmm. I was so good at like, I literally went to work and, like, was like, how are we going to make an eight-foot-tall flip-flop out yeah. of AstroTurf <laughs> and water hoses? Like, yeah. huh? That's where you're at. Yeah. Like, that's so cool yeah. and so random. Um, but then when, like, your boss is breathing down your neck about nothing, mm -hmm. and you're just like, don't you have something else to do? And you don't get a proper raise, and everybody else is getting raises. I had the same mm -hmm. title when I started as I did when I got laid off. How many years is in between? Four and a half years. Wow. And that's when I understood the corporate structure also has a good old boys, like, kind of thing going on. And I was just like, ah, this is bullshit. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm actually too good for this. Like, and not in a, like, I'm better than. No, literally, like, I'm too I'm good for this. I'm literally too good to be treated so poorly. Right. Like, how can I have my own agency around, mm -hmm. um, 
like not being at the mercy of someone else. Yeah. Which is a hoax when you start your own business because then your clients, <laughs> your clients, you're at the mercy of them. Right, right. So right. it becomes its own monster. There is no workaround, which is also why I say have something for yourself because, again, then you don't even have to go down that road. Right. So I started doing flowers and I started dancing mm. as a way to navigate these positions. Okay. And like when, when this is happening, this is like 2010. Yeah, 2000, uh, between. 2008 and 2010. Okay. Yeah. Did you know what you were doing? No, of course not. <laughs> My assistant at the time, shout out to Mariko Jones. She was like, you're really good mm. at flowers. My friend is getting married and they have a little money and you're going to do their wedding. Mm. But you need to have business cards. Hmm. And I was like, okay. So then I went on this whole hunt of figuring out, what am I going to name my company? Yeah. <laughs> and then I asked um, the head of graphics, Aid, shout out to Aid, um, who, like, if he would help me mm -hmm. design my logo. Hmm. And I was like, I have some ideas. What do you think? Blah, 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 blah. And then he um, helped me come up with what I, what I came up, what is my logo, logo today? today. Yeah. Um, and Bloom and Plume, my best friend Tim also. Helped me come up with a name um, because I love feathers and I love flowers. So mm. I wanted synonyms with um, those words that felt elegant and kind of like the same, mm -hmm. which now is just the weirdest tongue twister that I low key hate. <laughs> um, but I love the way it looks. It looks great. It looks so good. Yeah. Um, and then my friend Pete, we were at my friend Sari's house and she had my Disneyland cut out mm. from Main Street, mm -hmm. the silhouette. Um, and she was like, he he was like, oh, you should use that. And I was like, oh, okay. So I brought it to Aid, and we put the ampersand in the neck, and I was like, oh, it's like a tattoo. Oh, it's like a <laughs> piercing. Oh, it's like, like, it connects everything all together. And I was just like, oh, this is actually pretty this cool. Is this yeah. is the bomb. And so, and I wanted something that felt, um, could stand the test of time, could mm -hmm. be classic forever. I mm -hmm. didn't want it to be super trendy. I didn't want it to be around my name because I wanted to be able to walk away from it yeah. at, or, like, not to feel like I'm overly it's defined exactly. by this. Right, right. You um, learned that lesson already. Yes. Okay. I liked because it looked, the silhouette kind of looked like um, the shape of Africa a little bit <laughs> or, like, you never see those cameos of black people. So I thought that that was really cool. Um, and I was just like, I feel like there's so, this is a very iconic. Hmm. And there's something very iconic about, about it. this image yeah. and these things together. And it's a subtle but really overt way to, like, say this is a Black-owned business mm. without having to say it. Yeah. Tell me something without having to say it, you know, <laughs> before all those memes were yeah, around. I those... was doing that. <laughs> so I started doing it there. Um, and Mariko was like, so that's how I came up with the name. Mm. And Mariko was like, um, so I had the business card that I gave her and she gave it to her friend. We had a meeting. The budget for the wedding was $10,000, which was like a lot of money to mm -hmm. me for a wedding. And I spent $9,600. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> on the flowers for the flowers and accoutrement for this wedding. 9600 just... Yeah. And so you had $400 that was yours left? Sure. <laughs> Because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> you couldn't yes. tell me nothing. Yes. Where, obviously, that's no way to sustain a business and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, I need this for PR. I need this for marketing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I made these, like, really detailed terrariums that, like, each layer had, like, uh, a different type of soil. And there was, like, glitter in some of them. And then there was, like, I mean, they were, like. You were going all out. I went. Off. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Off. And in a way that, like, you would have to pay me a lot, a lot today. of money to do that today. <laughs> um, but you have to start somewhere, right? Absolutely. You didn't know at mm -hmm. the time. You had no idea. Mm -hmm. But also it was new, too. So you probably were just like, I just want to want this creative freedom. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. And then I kept doing the shit. Mm. 
And clients, and, how are you getting clients just from that referrals and things like that? Um, I have this client who had a store and I did her windows mm-hmm. on the side. Okay. And incorporating your arrangements. No. No. Not just at all. did her windows on the side. Okay. And it was just a creative extra cash kind of outlet. Yeah. A friend of mine introduced us. And then I noticed she had a blog mm. and she would do the flowers on her blog. And low-key, they weren't great. And I was like, you know, I can do this for you yeah. and make it look like you did it. <laughs> like, not, I don't need the credit or anything, mm-hmm. but, like, it'll just look more look, polished right? and give you that effect mm-hmm. because I do flowers. And yeah. she's like, oh, you do flowers? I didn't even know that. And mm-hmm. then it just turned into a thing. Wow. And so then she started to feature me on the blog. Mm-hmm. And then she started to tell all of her friends to use me. They did. I mm-hmm. showed up. I did a good job. Referral after referral after referral. And it just started to grow. And wow. that's where I, like, ebbed and flowed and learned that like-minded clients mm-hmm. are, like, the people that refer other people are just like them. Yep. And so then you have to, like, know what are the people <laughs> that you want to be around. Like, it was just fascinating. <laughs> Um, and yeah, like I've almost failed a couple of times. Mm. Um, uh, and, um, which is like what humbled me because mm. for a second I thought I was rich. Yeah, yeah. Um, thought I was balling out of control and, hmm. It's, it's different. The IRS had a different hmm. agenda. Yeah, I mean, Let that's me when all you. of the business stuff co- starts to come in, right? And you Child, start to... <laughs> and when you don't know how to run a business... You don't know these things. Because who taught you how to do exactly. that? Exactly. And there's no grace mm-hmm. for anybody running a business, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. In a creative way, you're just held to the same standards. Of course. Except if you have a Fortune 500 company, <laughs> then you there's can do whatever you want. There's a lot of different things, right. Right? Then, rather than the than small businesses. But tell me about, you know, the Anyways. funding piece. We had talked a little bit about the funding piece, right? Um, mm. Because, you, you know, you also have a, a coffee shop as well with your brother. Mm-hmm. And we talked a little bit about, like, finding funding for growing your business. And I think you were telling me something about, like, going to, like, 30-something banks. Oh, yeah. So, like, okay. So, my my first business, which is Bloom & Plume, the flower business, mm-hmm. Exists solely because people order things. Okay. Right? So it has grown over time because we keep getting parties. Yeah. People keep buying arrangements. Of people keep buying things. So there has... I think I took, like, I don't know, my $2,000 severance or something like that. <laughs> and that was the startup capital, startup capital. for my business. Um, but I didn't have... Um, there, there was nothing. So... Mm-hmm. You know, eight years into the brand, maybe. Um, essentially, I had just about lost my business through all this tax stuff that I'm still like, I'm still paying oh my for. God. Yeah. And was like, it just and that like was you like had four or five years later? Revenue and you didn't know about the tax implications of it. It's that not revenue. that you don't know about it as much as the way capitalism works is something has to be exploited. You're either exploiting labor, you're getting something exorbitantly cheap, yes. or you're able to work for free, mm-hmm. or like whatever it is, or you're like moving money around, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul, yep. and then you're going to rob Paul to pay Peter, <laughs> and then, you know, yeah. Maria needs her money too, and then <laughs> Tisha is asking for hers and her cut, and, you know, it's just like, you're just hustling, trying right. to, like, get everybody their peace. Mm-hmm. And then you're also trying to keep up the illusion that everything is everything's successful. Everything's okay, yeah. And everything's okay. Um, because nobody wants to work with a broke business. Hmm. Nobody wants to work with somebody that seems desperate mm. or tired mm-hmm. or, you know, like, it's just like, oh, no. Oh. Yeah. You know? Um, keep this allure. This you got to keep the allure. Yeah. It, it's really obnoxious, and so my whole thing, <laughs> <laughs> my whole thing was like, I'm a black-owned business. I shouldn't even have to pay these taxes. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like, it's not fair. How is it that I've paid more taxes than Trump has ever paid in his life? Mm-hmm. This is blah, wow, blah, 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 blah. Yep. But it's like Al Capone went to jail not for all the people he killed. For tax evasion. Tax evasion. You know? So Mm -hmm. it's just like, how in the hell did you think (laughs) your black ass 
ass was going to avoid paying your taxes. I mean, it's <laughs> good luck, buddy. Um, but yeah. I didn't know, like, you didn't... I, I genuinely, I, I, even so, um, from an earnest standpoint, um, as much as I had that political stance, like, it's just like none of the numbers made it where we could actually sustain the business, mm. grow the business, make payroll, mm -hmm. and pay all these taxes and do it all above board. Wow. Like, it, it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. People want to pay for flowers, but this country was built on slavery. Absolutely. And we still think, we still think labor should be free. Absolutely. Period. Hmm. Just let that sink in for a minute. It is 2021, and people constantly want your labor for free. People want to pay for products. Yep. People want to pay for flowers. People want to pay for experiences, hmm. but they don't want to pay your ass to organize it, to put it together, to deliver it, to drop it off, to hmm. clean it up, hmm. to support it. You know, like yeah. all those things don't. And how's it come in the form of a favor, right? Is the question. Can yes. you do me a favor? <laughs> yes. And, and that is just inherently flawed in the way that we operate as a capitalistic society in America. Yeah. Um, and trying to negotiate that is next to impossible when you don't have capital. Mm. Like you have to start with capital in mm. order to like, be able to get more capital. Make capital. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. my brother works for a big bank, and he's like, we literally don't loan money to people that don't have it. Hmm. Which is absurd, because isn't that the point? Right? <laughs> literally. <laughs> like, that's absurd. It's crazy. But, of course... You know, it always takes one or two rotten apples. Like, it's so funny. Like, you take the PPP, right? Mm -hmm. And how, like, a few people scam the system, which I don't even know how you did that. <laughs> like, ruined it for the people who actually really, really need, need it. it. Yeah, 100%. So when my business was about to, was, was failing, my brother um, figured out how to transfer jobs. He lived in Oakland, mm -hmm. and he moved to Los Angeles to, like, take care of his older brother. Hmm. And um, when I talk about the tightness, it's, yeah. like, actually not a f***ing joke. No, like, that's real. Like, literally um, moved. Like, I didn't know this for years, by the way, that that's what he had done. Wow. Or that was the motivation for him doing it, was to come and help save his brother, because he was like, um, I get, like, I could actually get really choked up over it, because he was like, I just noticed how um, nobody really shows up for Maurice. Mm. And he always shows up. Wow. And always does all this shit. And he really needs help. Wow. And I can help him. That is powerful. And he literally did it. And he saved my fucking business. And, um, like, his on-again, off-again girlfriend at the time, um, who's an account, who was, like, worked with an accountant firm, like, would just sit on the phone for hours waiting on hold with the federal government to get me on payment plans to become my, like, what do you call it? The the power of attorney person that mm -hmm. would just, like, mm -hmm. speak on my behalf to wow. help me, like, get out of this because I was so overwhelmed. Yeah. I just thought if I ignored it or it would go away, avoided it, it just, no, it just gets It just gets really worse. Really worse, which is why non sequitur, I'm obsessed with watching um, fungus toenail videos <laughs> because it's like... I did not see that coming. Yeah. It's like watching the neglect mm. of a foot or like where like somebody either can't bend down or like you're immediately repulsing. You're just like, what the fuck is wrong with them? They can't take care of the damn feet. Go get a pedicure, blah, blah, blah. But usually it's something a lot more complicated than yeah. that. It got so bad that they just... <sighs> and then you get embarrassed mm -hmm. and then you don't want to show your feet to anybody and then next thing you know you have like yeah. you know yeah. two inch toenails <laughs> and they're hard and fungus and gnarly and you got calluses like wh like whoa <laughs> and then they're scraping oh them and they're clipping them <laughs> and they're sandblasting them using a Dremel. You've been watching way too many videos. I watch at least one every day. <laughs> and 
And they're so soothing and satisfying to me because, like, I feel like on some level I've lived that. Lived that because of the tax situation. Yeah. And how, like, seeing people, even though it's kind of gross and weird, like, seeing how people are helping people figure this out and, like, literally caring for someone's feet is, like, kind of beautiful Mm -hmm. and ceremonial in some weird abstract way. And so it was kind of wild. Uh, My brother was just like, you need something that can be more sustainable. Mm. Um, You aren't going to live forever. You're not going to be around forever. You might not have your hands Hands forever. forever. So you can't just do the service. Mm -mm. Mm. And so he was like, we need to diversify your business in a Mm. way that makes sense. And so um, the coffee shop had been on my mind because I was thinking about... um, how my brand is so um, luxurious yes, and unobtainable in many ways mm. because of its entry price point. Okay, around the arrangements. Yes. Right, right. Because we can't okay. compete with Trader Joe's. We mm. can't compete with Vons. We yeah. can't compete with Ralph's. We can't compete with Whole Foods. Mm. Because they have so many locations, so they can buy bulk. They can buy just so many things. And because of that, they probably get a different price than you would get as an independent. You know what they do? They literally buy acres of land worth of flowers, right? They'll put on reserve, let's say they put on reserve 10 acres of land Mm -hmm. of tulips. (laughs) That's thousands of tulips, to put it in perspective. Wow. Okay. And then they'll be like, you know, we were looking at our projections and we actually only need eight acres. But if you give us an extra good deal, we'll buy all 10. Wow. You know, I need 30 bunches. Mm -hmm. So I can't compete with those kind of negotiations. Right. So my business has to be really a a very unique experience Mm -hmm. for it to be of value to anybody. I understand. Which then means it has to be expensive. But yes. as my social media was growing, I was able to see, like, so many people actually find what I'm doing is interesting. Mm-hmm. But their way to connect to the brand is really, really difficult. Just through digital, essentially. Yes. Right. And how can I figure out a way to give an experience where more people can engage mm-hmm. and feel like they're part of this movement that I think is being created? Mm-hmm. Simultaneously, we are sitting in front of my home and my home like I own it. I've been renting my duplex for 17 years and we are sitting, you know, a a, a property over where they are building a 35 unit apartment complex. Yes. Next to that is a 45 unit apartment Mm -hmm. complex. Um, yes, the banging does start every day at 7 a.m. My goodness. Um, and this has been happening in the last... So those obviously weren't there. Of course, right. You know, two years ago, there's an apartment complex across the street from the um, coffee shop mm-hmm. that wasn't there before we opened it. Hmm. We There's one on the corner. So there is all this development happening. Right. And I was like, somebody's going to open a coffee shop. (laughs) It's going to annoy me. What was it? Um, Anthony um, that was over at your your shop earlier was saying that's how you knew. He knew that they were pricing him out of his own community. That's how you know it's gentrified. So I was like, well, let me be the change that I want to see. I'm obviously invested in this neighborhood. I've lived here so long. Of course, you've been here. Yeah. Rent control is real. Um, <laughs> and also, like, my studio is two blocks away from my house. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's really, um, it just made sense to me. Yeah. And it made sense to my brother. And it was, um, so we put together a business plan and he worked on it. My brother is insane <laughs> when it comes to modeling things out like Mm. in a way i just had never thought about but he's like okay we have to make this amount of money if we get this kind of loan we have to make this kind of money we're gonna have Mm. to have this kind of personal guarantee we can leverage my home we can leverage your business Mm. we both need to find i don't know where we're gonna find like thirty thousand (laughs) dollars but we each need to come up with like money blah 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 and i was just like "Ah." (laughs) but i also was like okay we We can do it." it And 
we did it. We He was like, you need to start working on your credit immediately. I know mm-hmm. we have all that tax stuff going on, but, like, you can start, like, paying these minimum payments. we got to mm-hmm. get your credit up so that, like, because you really need a high credit score for us to qualify. And I was like, got it. Okay. And I just, like, we were on it. Wow. We started working on, the coffee shop has been open for two and a half years. Mm-hmm. We started working on it three years before it opened. We had a year delay wow. of our opening because of a plumbing, or excuse me, an electrical upgrade hmm. that the city made us do to the whole building, not just to our space. You had to do to the whole, who uh-huh. was responsible for that, you? We ended up being responsible for it because, like, it was fine if it wasn't touched. Hmm. But we, because, because we, we wanted, wanted to, to touch it. Yeah we ended up being responsible for it. Yeah. And so um, it was really, really annoying. Yeah. And, but that being said, we went to so many banks. We had such a beautiful package. I mean, me and my brother are very attractive Mm -hmm. and we're really smart. We're black. We're 10 times better because we have to be. Yes. We've worked on our credit. We (laughs) have all the things like our rent for our space is under market Mm -hmm. and like, we had all of these all things the that things. are just like, this is a recipe for like, say yes to the dress, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know? And 30 no's. 30 no's. 30 no's. Three zero? Like three zero. Like, no, yeah, oh, we're going to pass. Oh, I don't know. This just doesn't, something about it. You guys seem like great guys, but like, mm, yeah. And it's like. Even right. with the already established business, too, mm-hmm. right? It's, it wasn't as if you came out of nowhere. Yeah. You already had an established reputation, uh-huh. business, books, etc. Correct. Wow. And so 30 knows. When it was a black, you... small business, small um, SBA place, mm-hmm. um, Pacific Coast Regional Bank, um, that we got introduced to through our aunt who our aunt has, like, a 503C, like, small business, um, uh, SBA loan situation. Yeah, yeah. And so she couldn't help us because she, 503Cs is, like, buying properties. Okay. And ours was about opening the opening. business. Okay. So it was incredibly frustrating, um, that, like, the only reason we were able to, like, kind of find a way in was because our aunt was already in. Mm. Mm. So you don't win on your own merits. Merits. Nope. You don't win because you've actually worked super hard. You start to get somewhere because you know know someone. someone. And that is also an inherent flaw in our systems. Yes. Because when you hear about, like, all of the startups... Like, my, one of my favorites, my absolute favorite, is Elizabeth... What's her last name? Elizabeth something. Elizabeth something. The Theranos girl. Oh, Theranos. Child. <laughs> yeah. Raised literally... Billions. Billions. But because she knew a lot of people. A lot of people. And put on the accoutrement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because whenever, like, you know, again, in this country, we don't like to solve problems. We like to treat symptoms. Mm. You know? So it's like, oh, we don't have enough women CEOs. Oh, this one looks good, and it kind of looks like us. It it quacks like us. It barks like (laughs) us. It must be us. Yeah. Let's just do that one. Let's just do that one. It has to work. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it, it And that kind of, why I was so obsessed, because it really exposes the flaws in which this system works and how funding works and how, um, like, I actually think I have, a, I think I'm, like, not in a, nar- actually, I really work on my narcissism and I definitely have narcissistic tendencies. So let's be clear about that. <laughs> um, but from a relatively humble place, um, I actually think I'm pretty damn talented. Mm -hmm. I think I'm pretty damn smart. Mm -hmm. I have an incredible brand. Um, I'm really good at my brand. Yeah. Um, We, with no real money, 
behind our brand, you might think we have a lot. Wow. People are always impressed when they're like, so who's on the marketing team? Who's <laughs> on the human resources team? Who does this? And I'm like, me, my brother, mm -hmm. Miguel, Gardenia, yep. Sasha, like, uh, it's Whitney, team. like it's, it's just like a few people yeah. that do a bunch of things well yep. because we literally have to. There right. is no one else. I mean, I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. Um, I think a lot of things fall through the crack because I don't have the runway to really let it incubate and do it the way that I want it to be done. Mm. But, like, that's mm. my reality. Yeah. And this is the path I've chosen. Why do you feel it's, it's so important to be transparent about that, right? Because I, I think when we think, a lot of times when I thought about entrepreneurship before I got into it, no one really talks about these things. Everybody talks about like being in articles or being a part of campaigns. But a lot of times you don't hear stories about like what it's really like. Like it's not easy. Like just because you left corporate and you went into entrepreneurship doesn't mean it's going to be this magical mm -hmm. ex experience. Yes, there's a lot of great things about it. Don't get me wrong. But it's not easy. No. I think it's like, I think there's a lot of shame around failing mm -hmm. and around not um, being great. And I think I like to expose it because it's not that I think, I literally know I'm the exception of most rules. And I still can't make it work. Mm -hmm. And then that makes me be like, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> What's actually going on here? On here yeah. Now that I think I'm special, I just like, like Beyonce, I will outwork any motherfucker. Mm -hmm. So it's like, in my industry, bitch, I am amazing. Yeah. I'm incredible. Mm. Because I have put in so much work to do so. Yeah. Um, like, I don't have a dynamic personality just because I have a dynamic personality. It's because I was deeply insecure mm. and I thought nobody would like me. And mm. I thought like... I was ugly and I thought I was fat and I thought I was like being gay and all these different things that I was like, well, if I have an extraordinary personality and I'm really polite and I can speak in an articulate yeah. way, people will then take me more take seriously. Me, yeah. And then it's like, no, nope, that didn't work. <laughs> and then and you're like, well, if I do it this way, this way, that, no, nope, that nope. didn't work. Nope, I didn't get chosen for that. Nope, you didn't get chosen. And I was just like, wait, is it me? Hmm. Is it the way that I, like, what? What is it? And I'm yeah. like, as you do a lot of investigating, because you're like, I must be absolutely crazy. Mm. It must be me. It must be me. And then I was like, oh, it's actually literally not me. <laughs> and so I think it's important, the more we start to expose these flaws, possibly the more we can start to see change, the yeah. more we can start to see um, people being held accountable for how the good old boys club works and yeah. who they let in and why. And, you know, businesses that are successful are businesses that have the means to fail the most. Yes, absolutely. Because they have the ability to R&D. They have the ability to fail, but then they have the resources to then be able to make up those failures, mm -hmm. right? But when you don't have that runway, everything you do can be the end of your business. Yes. Anything that you try, even innovation, which would theoretically, if successful, propels your business. Correct. While we know, you know, business is not easy and we know that um, you have to try different things and you you work through funding. You've been able to, to find that different funding. But also, you know, you've, you've worked with in, incredible clients mm -hmm. as well. You know, you've had projects where you've worked with um, Beyonce on Black is King. You've... You know, you have a, a program on HBO, right? Mm -hmm. um, as you think about the journey that you're on, right, and mm -hmm. where you've been and, and where you're going to go, um, I have a question to you about other folks that might be looking to you and may even be asking you and reach out all the time. Maybe they reach out mm -hmm. through Instagram and they're like, Maurice, I'm thinking about starting my own floor business or mm -hmm. I'm thinking about stopping a coffee shop or I'm thinking about starting a fashion brand. What advice would you give them? Don't do it. 
And so I always just tell young entrepreneurs, young people that are like trying to thrive and do things, like figure out like literally how to put your oxygen mask on first. Hmm. Like they say that on the airplane for a very, very good reason. You literally can't help anybody if your bitch ass can't breathe. Yes. Accurate. Period. <laughs> now, in that, like you always have to be checking your ego, right? Because mm -hmm. it's really easy to get caught up, which yep. is how I almost lost my business the first time, mm. getting caught up in ego. And I thought it would never happen to me. Yeah. And it totally just got a, like, a bitch got caught up. And so you need to have that thing mm -hmm. that is keeping you yeah. grounded yeah. so that you don't go off. Mm -hmm. But you have to stabilize yourself first so that you actually can be around for 50 years, mm -hmm. for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And that literally actually makes a difference because how many people have you employed over oh, the yeah, last yeah. 50 years right. that then is sustainable, yes. is actually making a difference in the community, mm. is actually a stable that people can rely on. 